Let's start the second part with a lot of rust treatment for the four wall pieces. This way they can sit flush on the back and front plate without leaving a gap. And it's also a good idea to bring them all to the same height. Afterwards I did the same thing with the remaining parts to make them look like a proper square. Then I grabbed my adapter which will allow me to secure my screen to a mini tripod or a mini ball head for my camera. I marked the exact center of my bottom wall piece and measured the necessary hole diameter. Afterwards I drilled the hole and made sure that it is a tight fit. Now I positioned my adapter on top and marked where I needed to create an indentation so that the bolt of the tripod can actually reach the thread. Once the tripod can hold the adapter nicely, you may notice that there is a bit of extra plastic hanging over the sides. That's a case for our helpful rasp. Afterwards we can finally add plenty of hot glue to seal the deal. Next I searched for a nice spot for my driver board in the bottom left corner of the back plate, marked the necessary holes and used my rotary tool to create them. After I secured the driver board with bolts and nuts to the plates, I marked the position of the signal input cutout on my left wall piece. And since I'm already working on this wall piece, I also added the marking for my slide switch which will later cut the power to the boost converter. Then I grabbed 5 10mm long push buttons and my right wall piece to mark a nice spot for each of them. And I also added two more markings for red and green 5mm LED which will later tell me the charging state of my batteries. And lastly on this wall, a rather imprecise marking for my charger board which I instantly use to create a nice cutout which embeds my micro USB port with PCB inside. Now we can move on to the fun part, which consists of drilling all the holes and using my scroll saw to make the square cutouts. After I made sure that the push buttons, LEDs and slide switch fitted perfectly, I only had to make one improvement by enlarging the cutout for the HDMI input. Then I positioned my other necessary parts on the back plate and marked the holes for each of them. Afterwards I used my rotary tool again to drill the holes and now I can build the case temporarily by linking everything together with small drops of hot glue. I did this to keep the position of the front and back plate stable while I drilled the pilot holes 3mm from the edges for those little screws with a diameter of 3mm and a length of 15mm. But please be careful because this is the most dangerous step since the holes must be very close to the middle of the wall pieces. Otherwise it can happen that the MDF will split. Then I also created a little indentation so that the small screws can sit a bit more flush with the surface, but not completely. Now it is finally time to use wood glue and the small screws to secure the top and bottom wall piece to the front plate. Afterwards, the left and right wall pieces received their glue treatments and got pushed into place and secured with clamps. During the two hours the glue needs to harden, I already removed the LED and all the buttons from the controller board and also the charging status LEDs from the TP4056 board. Then I removed the small screws from the front plates and went outside to spray paint my case with three layers of coating. And just as a tip to myself, it would be smart to remove the excess glue with sanding paper before spray painting the whole case. Otherwise it looks like this. We are almost done with the mechanical build, so let's finish it already by securing the driver board, boost converter and controller board with bolts and nuts. Then I hot glued my batteries directly to the plates and also used hot glue to secure the main LCD, the battery charger circuits the charging LEDs and all of the push buttons. And lastly, I secured my slide switch with screws. Ok, we are at the finish line, only the wiring is left, but it's very similar to what I already described in part 1. The only difference is this flexible speaker wire which I used to connect the charger circuit output to my main switch, which then connects to the input of the boost circuit. The output of the boost converter gets soldered to the driver board and the power wiring is done. 
Afterwards, I connected the anode of the LEDs together and soldered thin flexible wire to each pin. The common anode connects to both middle pads and the green cathode goes to the right pad and the red cathode to the left pad. After I did a small test whether the new LEDs work properly, I soldered one wire to each side of the new push buttons. Those wires then simply connect to the main controller board, in any order you think is pleasant. And after I tidied up the wiring with zip ties, I simply reconnected the LCD and controller board to the driver board and we are done. But don't worry if you missed a step during the wiring, there are better pictures on Instructables. After I closed the whole unit with the small screws, it was time to use it. And all I can say at the end is that it was a good idea to build it. If you liked this video, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.